Hi, thanks for joining me today. I'd like to clear the air about two things that people often say when they understand the doctrine, at least to some extent, not everything about it, but about what it means to rightly divide the word of truth. One thing that people say is that we worship Paul, and that's ridiculous. That's totally ridiculous. I don't know who worships Paul. I don't know a person on the planet who does that. Uh, we definitely don't worship Paul if we get our gospel from Paul and Jesus. Anyway, you'll see in the slideshow. The second thing is that we don't look at all of God's word. We just look at Paul's 13 epistles, the ones that start with his name, the ones that he wrote, those only 13. And we throw out the rest of the Bible. Stupid! Really stupid. Nobody throws out the Bible. Every single word of God is pure and correct and accurate and preserved. And I believe every single one, every single word. I even believe the periods and the colons and the semicolons. And there's even question marks in there. I believe those. So without further ado, let's talk about some facts about the Apostle Paul. Number one, you probably know most of these. Paul wrote more books of the Bible than any other writer. Paul wrote more words in the New Testament than any other writer except Luke, but 25% of Luke's writings, half of the book of Acts, were about Paul. Paul talks about Jesus Christ more than any other writer. If you want to know the updated information about Jesus Christ, wouldn't you get it from the person who wrote last about him? the person who wrote most about him? Of course, that's the Apostle Paul. Paul talks about grace more than any other Bible author. Matter of fact, he talks about grace more than all the other writers put together. That must say something about grace. Now, we've always been saved by grace, anyone on the planet, and it's been by faith. But people such as Noah, Adam, Moses, these people didn't believe the same thing by faith. Adam had no idea about the 613 points of the law. That's not how he was going to get saved. And Noah didn't get saved or be made righteous like Abraham did to believe God that he would give him a land and a seed that would last forever. That's not how it happened. To belittle Paul and his writings is to belittle the Word, Jesus Christ, Paul was the only apostle ever sent by Jesus Christ to go to the Gentiles and the Gentile nations. No, I know what you're going to say. No, the Great Commission in Matthew chapter 28 or Mark chapter 16. Those are where Jesus was going out and he told them to go to all nations. Well, Jesus didn't change his his teaching from what he was in Matthew chapter 10. He said to go to the lost sheep of house of Israel. He was sending the 12, well then 11, at that point in time in Matthew 28, he was sending them to the Jews. So the Jews, the nation of Israel, the kingdom on earth would be, would be a kingdom of priests and they would be saved. And then all nations would come to the nation of Israel, to the Jews. Paul was the last person to see and to speak to Jesus Christ. If you're going to go find out the most updated information of your college roommate after being graduated for 30 years, do, do you go back to the yearbook? Do you go back to those documents? Or do you actually go to something that you know is current? Well, the most current things that we have about Jesus Christ is what he said to Paul. Paul was the last one to see him, and Paul was the one that was given a special revelation, a mystery, where the body of Christ would be saved without Jews, without covenants, and without the law. Paul was the one who completed the Word of God. We read in Colossians 1.25, Paul was the first one in the body of Christ. It was Paul alone who said, we are saved by the faith of Christ. Now, if you read your Bible and you don't find those words, that phrase, the faith of Christ, it's because you don't have a King James Bible, because it's only in the King James Bible. The other versions 
change the meaning by the instead of using the word of Christ, they use faith in Christ. And so instead of it being his faith, the faithfulness of him going and obeying the Father and going to the cross and suffering on the cross for our sins and shedding his blood, instead of that faith of Christ, they put it our faith. So they make it ours. It is Paul alone who said, we are not under the law, Romans 6.14. Peter never said that. John the Baptist never said that. It is Paul alone who speaks of the Jew and Gentile as one, we see in Galatians 3.28. It is Paul alone who speaks of the body of Christ. If you are saved today, that is, that you have believed that Jesus Christ died on the cross, shed his blood, was buried, and rose again. If you believe that and have put your trust in that alone for the forgiveness of your sins, then you are saved and you are a member of the body of Christ. You're not a member of Israel. You're a member of the body of Christ. And nowhere else is the body of Christ spoken about except through Paul. You see how we're getting at to the, the importance of the writings of Paul for us today? Yes, all scripture is profitable for us, and we should read it, study it, and know it. We can't understand Paul without understanding the Old Testament. He quotes the Old Testament over a hundred times. We need the Old Testament. We need all scripture. We need all scripture, but not all scripture is for and to us today. Timothy 2.7, consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things speaks for itself, doesn't it? Paul's writings are the only place we find the gospel message that can save a person today. Well, wait a minute. There's the four gospels. Jesus gave a, a salvation message. Well, listen to Jesus's message and the, and the gospel that he gave. He gave the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom included many things, but it wasn't faith in, by grace alone, in Christ's death, burial, and resurrection alone. No one ever said that. Jesus, matter of fact, said to keep the commandments, tithe, give animal sacrifices. He did that when he said, go to see Moses and offer the, the, what Moses uh, required. And that was an offering of a sacrifice, if you read in the Old Testament. I think it's in Leviticus. Hey, I can't do all the work for you. Open your Bible. Look at the verses. See what they say. Make a decision on yourself. Look and read the words on the page. Don't interpret. Just see what it says and make sure that you know it in its context. So to ignore Paul is to ignore Jesus Christ. If you were to take Paul's 13 epistles out of the Bible, you would be under the law and not under grace. You would be required to do many things, the works of the law, to be saved. We are not, thank God, we are not under the law. We are under grace. That's why we listen to the words that Jesus gave to Paul. Jesus gave to Paul. Those are the words that we pay attention to for us. Now, yes, many scriptures in the Old Testament are applicable to us today, either historically, spiritually to some extent, but not necessarily doctrinal. The rule of thumb would simply be is if there's something in the Old Testament or in other writings in Genesis through Malachi or Hebrews through Revelation, if there's something in those writings that contradict Paul, then we go with Paul. If Paul says that we could eat anything, then we don't have to go to Leviticus and worry about how we're supposed to eat, or in Genesis, of how our diet, what it's supposed to consist of. We can go to Paul, and he says, as long as we give thanks, we can eat anything we want. So there you go. Thanks for your time. Appreciate your listening, at least if you got to this point. And what I'm looking to do is to get you to think about what you believe. Make sure you understand that what you understand is God's word rightly divided so you don't confuse the doctrine that's not written to us.
from the doctrine that is written to and about us. Mm -hmm.